On behalf of St. James, I'm Tony Newman. We want to welcome you and thank you for your support. I see Carol from the Department on the Status of Women stand up. Uh, they are a big supporter of ours. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank Gilead, Kaiser, Ambassador Hormel, Horizons, and the Dorian Fund for donating over 62000 for us to move. We've gotten a new refrigerator, we're getting a new computer, so thank you. St. James, who are we and what are we really doing here? St. James is a peer-based occupational health and safety clinic for sex workers and their families. We exist to provide free, compassionate, and non-judgmental health care and social services for sex workers, current or former of all genders and sexual orientations while preventing occupational illnesses and injuries to a comprehensive contour of services. I'm saying that we served sex workers 25 years ago. I was a sex worker. I was homeless. Um, so I understand that concept. I, I was a street worker uh, on 14th Street in New York City. Oh yeah, join the club. Thank you. I have, a, I have another colleague here. Uh, so we're here to serve the marginalized and sex workers both past and present. We do medical services with our fabulous uh, clinical director, Chuck, is here. Nurse Carmen, Nurse Celestina. So we have a medical team. We have therapists such as Corey and Avi. They are L LFMTs and AFMTs. So we are stepping our game up with our deputy director, Pike, who is running our program, Stand Up Pike. We are here to serve and really take care of sex workers. And we appreciate you supporting us. This is our 20th year, starting in January, and we're starting it here. Thanks to Mark Rye, the owner of the building, and Lance Tomer, our new partner, and my landlord. <laughs> I would like all of the St. James staff to stand up, and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> this is the St. James team. I have a, a, a board president here, Dr. Alex Lutnick. Would Alex stand up, please? And I don't see another board member at this time. Thank you, Lawrence. We have a special gift for our facilities managers from the staff of St. James, who work day and night to make this happen. Dirk, get up here. to somebody that knew where I was coming from. So um, this is really sweet. My St. James family supports me, so thank you. And I love you all, and thank you for this. So that we're here. Amen. Now I would like to welcome our state senator, Scott Weiner, who is a big supporter of sex workers in St. James. Thank you, Tony. Let's hear it for Tony. Uh, I want to, first of all, thank uh, St. James for everything that you do. And I feel like I've now worked with multiple generations of leadership of this amazing organization, uh, which uh, just does so much to make sure that people have all the resources that they need to succeed. And that's really what this is about. It's about uh, meeting people where they are, and so often in life and in society, uh, society tells us what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. Uh, you're too feminine, you're too masculine, you were supposed to be born this way, why are you this way, you're, we don't like the gender that you are. It's just constantly telling us what we're supposed to be. Uh, and, uh, and that's not how people are healthy and happy. 
meet people where they are. Uh, and that's what St. James is about. That's what San Francisco uh, is about, embracing everyone for who uh, we are. Um, and so it's been a real honor to work uh, with uh, St. James. Uh, and particularly, uh, I want to thank you uh, for uh, working with us and supporting us on our bill to decriminalize HIV, SB uh, 239. And, you know, we, it's, it's really amazing when you think that California was behind other states in saying that it's a, it's a felony if you are positive uh, to have sex with someone, even if there's no risk, even if you, no matter what, uh, it's, it's just not, it's this, uh, this sort of attitude that if you, if you just threaten to put someone in state prison, then people are going to, you know, not have sex or something, or people are not going to be human beings as opposed to taking a public health approach where we say let's have great education, access to health care, uh, make sure people are healthy and knowledgeable and, and, and instead of driving people into the shadows to be ashamed of having HIV or to say I might be a criminal because I'm HIV positive, to encourage people to be open and talk about it. Uh, and you don't do that by criminalizing. Uh, and so it was a great win. A lot of people thought it couldn't happen. And I'll tell you that when we would have these hearings and the, the huge number of people that would come to these hearings and just talk authentically about their lives, it was so moving that I think there were members of the legislature that maybe weren't intending to vote for it, who voted for it. Because once you hear just from real people talking about our lives, uh, it changes minds. Uh, and so it was a great win and thank you for your partnership uh, on it. We have more work to do. Uh, and you know we, we've done a lot of work in California to make sure that immigrants uh, feel comfortable reporting crimes to the police and don't uh, fear being deported if God forbid you go and report that you've been a victim of a crime or you witnessed a crime. Uh, well you know and I know that sex workers face the same challenges. If you report a crime you might get arrested uh, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen and so we're going to do that work and I look forward to working together on it uh, because no one should ever be afraid to go and report a crime. So again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you do and I do have a certificate of recognition uh, from the California State Senate for St. James Infirmary. So, thank you. to now introduce one of the founders of St. James and our clinical director, Dr. Chuck Collinson. Thank you, Tony. Thank, I'm just going to say a couple of words. I wanted to say um, thank you to two very important uh, groups of people. One, um, the San Francisco Department of Public Health, who's been our um, partner in St. James Infirmary since the, the day that we opened back in uh, 1999. So thank you to all of those leaders. Uh, most recently, um, uh, Director of Public Health, Barbara Garcia, who um, described St. James Infirmary as the safety net of the safety net. So we're very proud of that, and we miss you, Barbara. And I also want to say thank you. Um, Scott mentioned that there's several generations of St. James Infirmary folks here um, today, and that's who I wanted to thank is our current generation, all the amazing people uh, who are part of the staff uh, of St. James Infirmary now, who will be taking the organization into the future. Um, uh, Carmen and a couple of other of us were there from the beginning, but. Um, you know, St. James Infirmary is a, you know, a living, breathing organization, so it's, it doesn't rest on its laurels. So St. James Infirmary is the people who are running it and providing services. Um, many of, a, a few of our key staff members aren't here tonight because they're out providing services to our community, so we thank you. And uh, on behalf of myself and all the people who came before our current group of uh, St. James Infirmary folks, thank you so much for your leadership and um, St. James Infirmary is in great hands with all of you, so thank you.
Mayor of London Breed couldn't be here today, but she sent two of her departments here. I'm going to uh, introduce DeAnthony D. Jones and Ashley Murray from the Neighborhood Services Liaison to the Office of the Mayor. Um, and I'm also going to introduce Maceo Person, who is the Civic Engagement and Operations Manager for the Mayor's Office of Transgender Initiatives. That office has helped us get $300,000 for our trans program. Please <laughs> make it. Thank you, Claire and, and Michelle and Kyle. Thank you. All of you come up. All of you come up. Uh, thank you, Director Newman. And the mayor sends her regrets that she could not be here, but she supports the work of the St. James Infirmary 1,000%. It is important that we destigmatize and we give people safe spaces and places where they can get not only just comprehensive care, but empathetic care. This is the nation's first peer-ran clinic for sex workers, so it's important that we keep supporting this work. Uh, the mayor definitely, again, regrets that she could not be here, but I'm excited that I could because I see a lot of faces that I've worked with in the community. And not just thanking the St. James Infirmary for their work, but also for the programs and initiatives that they support uh, as well, Taja's Coalition, uh, as well as TGI Justice Project and Compton's Cultural District, the first in the nation. And just sending some love to Janetta Johnson. And we also have here Honey Mahogany doing some great work in the So, I just wanted to be brief in just saying that we're excited that this facility is open. This is a new beginning for you all, and we're going to be right down the street cheering you all. So once again, thank you so much. And on behalf of the mayor of San Francisco, uh, I'll, I'm also going to present a certificate of honor, honoring the St. James Infirmary for the work that they do and honoring, honoring them for the occasion of their grand reopening. So thank you so much. We're so excited to be here and be supportive of St. James Infirmary and of this huge move. Um, also, just a side note, I am an operations manager. I used to be an operations manager for Transgender Law Center and helped them move twice. Um, so I know how much work and effort it takes into doing a move. So Dirk, I just want to say congratulations again. Um, on your hard work. Uh, yeah, from one ops person to another, I, I get it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, so the Office of Transgender Initiatives is the first and only trans-led city government office in this country. And it's a, definitely a historic thing. And um, it really shows the kind of support that San Francisco has towards trans communities. Um, but I think one thing that's really important about our, our office is that we really care about being like community focused and community centered. Um, so we have a community advisory board um, that leads sort of our work and our priorities, but also care about being here and making sure that the organizations that provide care, that provide spaces for our communities to thrive, um, and where we're at, really get the support that they need. Um, so we're here to advocate for that and, and to have your backs. So we're just so excited about this move and excited to celebrate. Thank you so much. Thank you guys very much. Um, now we're going to introduce the guy that allowed us to come. Mark Rye is the CEO of Project Open Hand, and when Lance and I went to him, he said yes. So Lance, my landlord, come up. <laughs> These two guys are the two people who made it happen. My name is Mark Rye. I'm the CEO of Project Open Hand, and I'm not going to say a lot because um, it's hard to follow Tony in anything, but I will say that um, 22 years ago when we were smart enough or happy enough to buy this building, we began that process of creating some kind of a beacon of hope in San Francisco. And since API was one of our, I'm sorry, since San Francisco Community Health Center was one of our <laughs> very first partners and remains our strongest partner in this work, we could not be happier than to have the St. James Infirmary join us. And what I hope you know as you come into this building is that you are welcome and you are celebrated and 
and we need you every bit of the way. So thanks for joining us. We're very grateful. And Tony, uh, good evening. Um, I just want to give Tony and St. James Infirmary, everyone, just a big round of applause. We love you all and are so thrilled that you are here. Um, you know, when Tony came to me and said, Lance, um, I hear you have a clinic <laughs> and we need some space for a clinic. I said, sure, of course, you know, that is who we are. San Francisco Community Health Center, we accept everyone and we embrace everyone with love, care, support, and health care, quality health care. And then, so I said, no problem. And then she said, um, and we have dozens and dozens of staff, and we need a space for dozens and dozens of staff. And I said, oh, wait, hold on, I don't know how we're gonna do that. <laughs> but you know what, here's what I wanna say. You introduced me as a landlord, and I actually don't see it that way. I actually see St. James Infirmary and San Francisco Community Health Center as fellow warriors in a fight um, to bring justice to everyone who is not getting justice that they, that they deserve. We often say here at San Francisco Community Health Center that we are serving the queerest among us, and we are bringing the highest quality health care to the queerest among us because that's who San Francisco is. And so when St. James came and asked us, let's partner, I said, you know what, I brought that to my team, and we said, no way, we will make this happen. We're gonna find the space, we're gonna do it, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk to Mark, talk to Project Open Hand, and we did, we made it work. And I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart how grateful I am that we are partnering in this fight and in this path together to make sure that we do right by all of our community members, everyone who is in San Francisco who needs care, love, support, acceptance. Um, that is who we both are, and I am just honored and privileged uh, to be working alongside you and your team, Tony, and uh, to have St. James Infirmary here with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we have one of the talkers of my group. <laughs> we voted that Wau Hernandez would be our spokesperson to speak on behalf of the staff. He is the community engagement coordinator slash manager. Wau, welcome. I got myself a timer, Tony. All right. So I'm actually a little nervous. But I wanted to start off with saying, because a lot of y'all are, are already invested in St. James and know the work that we're doing. So I want to talk a little bit briefly about why I, do, why I got into this work and why it's really important to me. See, so I actually identify as, as, a, as a sex worker. When I was a lot younger, I ended up having to do sex work because it provided me a, net, a source of income that I, was not, that I was not able to have. I was HIV positive and couldn't maintain a job because I was getting really sick and I didn't know I was positive. Um, yeah, and then, what it, so I got into sex work and it allowed me to get, just get an, an extra day. So I definitely feel empowered that it allowed me to survive and be here today. But not all the time was my work very glamorous. I'm gonna talk about two, two instances that, that really drive me on providing, providing services for sex workers. So when I first found out I was positive, it was actually a client that took me to my hospital. <laughs> I got really sick. And the doctor, when she told me about it, basically, I, I'm from San Francisco, so I knew that there was medication and there's a, there's a plan for me. And she told me that she wouldn't provide me treatment because of the work that I was doing. What? Yeah. yeah. I felt, I didn't know what to do. I was just, I just didn't know what to do. It's, I'm still shaken but thinking about that kind of stuff. But once I left, I was still positive in doing the work that I did. Um, I put on my ads that I was positive because of, I felt it was important. But then what happened was, because of criminalization and, stig and the stigma, it allowed, it allowed one of my clients to basically threaten me because at the time it was a felony to be positive and you could, put, you could pass it on to someone. So I didn't know what to do. And I did, this, I did this by myself for a very long time and I felt alone. So later on in life, I ended up finding out, I ended up finding, it took me actually getting really sick and getting an AIDS diagnosis to finally get treatment. And 
when I finally got treatment, I started, get, I started getting healthier, and I finally started seeing, seeing my future. And I wanted to do something about what my experience was, because I didn't want anybody to feel the way that I felt. So I went to this class, and basically I was like, everybody's like, wait, why are you doing this? I'm like, look, I want to do some rogue social work services for sex workers. Because <laughs> I didn't know that there was something like St. James. And there, the guy was like, you know there's already a clinic that does the work. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> so sure enough, I applied. I applied as a case manager, and I got the job. And it really made me realize that the need is still there. My story isn't like anything new. A lot of my clients had, had experienced something similar where they went to their medical pro provider and experienced discrimination. So it really, it really made me understand the, what kind of work that we're doing. And it also started my own personal healing process. See, I thought I was healed when I, came, when I got here. But the fact that we are a peer-based clinic made, made this in more it's made it a real healing process for me because I was surrounded by people like Pike, Corey, Ida, Dirt that knew the kind of that knew my, that knew something about what I was doing and how I was experiencing my life. And I, for the first time in my life, I felt like I was really supported in everything. And not only that, everybody here is not only invested in me, but in our participants. Our participants matter to us because they are the ones that are that are still doing some of the work, some, are still doing the work in this time when our when our work is highly criminalized and still stigmatized. So St. James does a couple things. We advocate for our clients. We provide we provide services so someone can come and talk about their work and it's going to be free of judgment and they can talk to a participant. They, could also, they also have a community that supports them, and they could build community, yeah, like, the, like the way I have. So, I want, the reason why I started off with that story is because I want us to really think about why this, 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 this work that we do is really important. I felt dehumanized by my, by my doctor. It took me getting really sick to finally find, like, finally get myself to where I'm at right now. And the thing is, there are still people that think that way. So it's important that St. James continue to be here so we can advocate for our participants. So we can provide these services without someone being scared that they're gonna be judged for, for the work that they do because, of, because, because the work that they did was criminalized. We're criminalizing a choice that they made to survive. So honestly, I know it's a little, it was a little heavy, but I really do love being here. St. James has made me feel really happy where I'm at. It has made me feel um, connected with a whole new community. Um, and yeah, so I wanna just say that like, if this is your first time being here for St. James, if you are an ally, definitely listen to sex workers. When sex workers are telling you about their experience, listen to them. And not only listen to them, if you have a platform, provide a platform for them. If you have the money, continue funding us. <laughs> and if you are part of our community, join us with St. James. There are, there are gonna be tons of, pro there's gonna be tons of events for y'all to join and also volunteer with us. The work that we've done has not been, hasn't been, um, we couldn't do the work that we do with the amount of, without the amazing volunteers that we have. So definitely come and volunteer. We have next week, Thursday and Friday. Sorry, now I'm putting my pitch. Uh, <laughs> Thursday and Friday is our, um, yeah, Thursday and Friday we have our winter quarter volunteer orientation. So definitely come talk to me if you're interested and you can join our amazing team. So thank you. We were done, but Chuck and uh, administrative coordinator CC Roberts wants to come up for something. So Chuck Collinger, our clinical director is coming. They're lighting a cake or something. Okay, they're lighting a cake. Okay. 
They're bringing the cake to the front. <laughs> oh, you're here. It's supposed to be a surprise. It's Tony's birthday, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to Canada.